Hello and welcome to Axe TV. Uh, Neil here. We've got Andy and Dave. We all know Dave. Uh, great to have you on. It's been a while. I'm trying to catch up. It's been a, it's been a bit of a roller coaster of a weekend with uh, a win away, transfers in and arts, and Portsmouth away coming up. So just come to you, Dave. I mean, what's your take on game against Oxford? I mean, it were an away victory. Some say it were a bit. Scrappy, some say well messy, some said we played dark arts or sort of game art, but what's your take on it, mate? Um, it was a win and it was an ugly win. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's a win, and a win is three points. It's not an easy place to go and get a result, uh, regardless of the form that Oxford are in at the moment. You know, you can only be in a slump for so long, and how many times have we gone to somewhere to face a team that's on a losing streak? And they've broken their losing streak against us. You know, it's it's what happens to us. It didn't happen on Wednesday. Um, first half, I thought, was very impressive. Apart from a couple of wasteful chances at, um, in the box. But, you know, we got the one goal lead. Uh, we've shown promise. A um, bit more luck, maybe. And we could have had a, another couple of goals. But the second half, I, I don't know what happened. We scored the second goal. And we just seemed to switch off. Mm. And... Um, Dark Arts is definitely a word for it. Um, I understand the time-wasting thing, but there's only so much time-wasting you can do. And we time-wasted for so much, so long in that game. And the ref was a bit of a one of them when he was what, to be the centre of attention. And I'm surprised we didn't get a red card for, for, for time-wasting because mm -hmm. Collins was pushing his luck a little. Uh, Herbie Kane was pushing his luck a little as well. And um, Connell was pushing his luck, and I just thought, hey, he's going to show a red card in a minute because that's just what he, the way he was going. It was a, a spot for about 20 minutes in that second half where he just gave everything to Oxford. And I didn't think we were going to get a decision going our way at all for the rest of the game. But we got away with it. Um, there was some dodgy defenders in the second half. Um, Arts in mouth time, but we held out, and I thought the... Um, Keeping it in the corner at the end was an absolute masterclass in how to do that because, you know, 10 minutes it was down in that corner for, and it was just done so well. That that was that was great. That was good to see, you know, mm -hmm. close games out like that. Time wasting gets my anxiety going, especially when players are on the other category. Uh, apart from stuffing it, that game potentially, other games, you know, so my heart's always going when they're, especially Collins, he's... <laughs> He's a master of it, though, and he always goes away with it just. But um, it was a good three points. Uh, it was a difficult three points. We made it hard in the end, but, you know, three points are three points. The win's a win. Happy days. Move on to the next game. Move on to the next game. So, yeah, I mean, just going off of that, Andy, what uh, Dave has been saying, bit of the dark arts. Uh, I think we're starting to get, you know, a bit of house and a bit of understanding at league and what to do to see games are. Again, yeah. for me... My second it in first half, I thought we started off brilliantly, like we normally do. 10 15 minutes, I thought we took it to him. A pretty open game, if I'm being honest. Um, and for me, I think I don't know what your articles of this, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But in second half, I thought we sent to sit, sit back a, a, a bit too deep and try to soak up an intimate counter. And I think that's when we, it could have been getting a bit dodgy, a bit squeaky bum time because when obviously they brought Tyler Smith on, and we all know what he can do. Um, it could have been, you know, ruining his own his own bad luck kind of thing. You know, it could have played into their hands and quite easily we could have come away with a draw. But mm. it's pleasing to see that, you know, we take it into the corner and we do waste a bit of time. Not not the best of things, but at times like that, I'd rather do that than try to tippy-tappy it about in his own area. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree. Um, I thought for staff... Um, I thought we were far better side, honestly do. Um, I was quite happy with for staff. Um, overall, I think it was a very good professional away performance. Um, had everything like you've just said. Um, and yeah, uh, it's good to see that when um, we, we away as well, take it into the corner. That's what we've been going back to like experience and stuff. That's what we've been crying out for. And that's what experienced players uh, do. Um, whether that's part of coaching, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it was good to... I mean, even... Um, I think it was near end where we had a throw-in. Um, I think it either were Williams or Cardinal just let ball 
um, roll past him before mm-hmm. I pick, pick it up. Yeah. Th- things like that. Um, it's that, that's what you need to do. Uh, other teams do it against us, uh, even with uh, time wasting. Uh, I think Collins. I think he got booked, didn't he, for mm. uh, time wasting? Um, but o- other teams have done it to us. Some's not got booked as well. So. Yeah, uh, I, I was quite happy with it. Um, yeah, the second half, we, we did seem to drop off. I thought we could have changed uh, some, especially up front. Um, I don't think Devante Cole had his best game, but I think that's been nitpicky. Um, winning 2-1 away at Oxford. Um, mm. I, I bought that one with me, brilliant. Difficult ground to go to, and I get where yeah. you come from on about yeah. players, like you said, Veer, we could have changed up a bit and we'll get on about players because we're a transfer week as well, Dave. I mean, a goalkeeper out, two coming in, uh, defenders, uh, strikers, midfielder. Uh, and again, for, for me, I, you know, we'll get on at Portsmouth game in a minute with Brad Collins and that, but Jack Walton, I kind of get where the club are coming from because he's out of contract at the end of the season, get a bit of money what he could do. And to be fair, I think... I don't know what your article on this. I was expecting to lose one or other in summer, um, you know, playing number two. But we brought back Harry Isted in from Luton. And apparently he's got good reviews at Luton. Uh, he might get a start at Portsmouth. But what's your take on overall transfers, Dave? I mean, you know, we haven't got money to splash for cash. We all know that. But John Russell coming in, Ollie Shaw coming in. Um, I was a bit concerned about the amount of loans coming in. But it were, it, for me, it was pleased to see that they... I mean, I didn't see uh, Russell transfer for... Pff, took me off guard, to be fair. I wasn't expecting it, Dave. No, that was a that was a strange one. Like, it came in right at the last minute and, you know, it was a, I had Twitter refreshing all the time and looking out and I think it was a post from someone Telegraph Sport that put that up. Mm. And um, I thought, yep, yeah, you know, that's a... Uh, I'd... Um, Ollie Shaw, first off, Ollie, with, with the players come down from Scotland and the Scottish leagues, you never know how they're going to adapt to the English game and how quickly it's going to take them to adapt. Mm. And, um, I, you know, so open, open-minded open where it comes to Ollie Shaw. I don't know a lot about him, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I know he, he's had some time at Hibernian and then moved on. But, um, you know, Lyndon Dykes came down to the job for, for QPR. So oh, yeah. you know sure. it's it's just it's how he how he adapts to the to the English the English style of the game and um you know League One football. So mm. you know I hope we get to see something positive for him because it's, up front is where I think we are the weakest at the moment. Mm. Um Russell, yeah, he was um last one to come in and um you know it was quite a coup that I think um as I say you, you were saying before he had some good reviews for Huddersfield last season, um, not so much this season, but, you know, we've seen it ourselves when um, Ishmael was in charge and we had some outstanding performances and then the next season, the same players, they just weren't playing to that standard. And, you know, it's it, it all depends how they, you know, the relationship with the gaffer at the end of the day. And um, I think um, Duff's got a, I think he's got a good relationship with the, the players. And um, I think he's... Um, He's the sort of coach slash manager, whatever you want to call him, that's going to you know bring these players in, adapt them, and give them a bit more confidence. You know, um, teach them things and um, little tricks, like uh, Andy was saying about um, the, the little bits of the time wasting with the letting the ball roll past you and all that. You know, we we haven't got uh, the experience that some teams have, but you know, we, we seem to have picked up some tricks over the over the last half of the season. And um, you know, I think a lot of that's gone down to Duff. I think he's he's a, he's been around. He knows the game. You know, he's a successful player. And um, I, I'm excited to see Russell, I really am. Mm. I think we need someone yeah. like that in midfield. We've been crying out for someone, you know, all season. Um, get him in there, see what he can do. Um, the goalkeeper situation, I can understand why Walton's gone. You yeah, know, can't blame him at all. And I wish him the very best of luck. Yeah. Um, I've, a lot of people have been asking about um, the guy we got from Swansea. Um, what's happening with him? And oh, so, been, yeah, yeah. From what I've been told, he's. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be well. It's it's hard to say because we're not really, not really seeing him in action much, but he doesn't seem, from what people have said when they've seen him play for the under twenty threes or whatever, that he's a hundred percent confident goalkeeper. Mm. Um, 
this guy from Luton, you know, people have heard good things about him. We haven't seen him play, or I, I haven't seen him play. Hmm. You know, and he could be called into action this weekend. So we, I am hoping that, you know, he can come in and there and slot in nicely because, you know, obviously he's only been here a few days. And if he gets thrust into the deep end like that, which he probably wasn't expecting, hmm. you know, it's you got to have that relationship with your defenders. And um, you need to know who's doing what and where they're going to be. And, you know, it's short time, turnover time to get that relationship up and running. So if he does come in hmm. Saturday, it's going to be a massive test for him. But, um, yeah, it started off slow, the transfer window, like it usually does. And um, I think it ends on the high for me. I really do. Yeah. Happy with it. Cool. I mean, I'm looking at Ari Istead, uh, a bit like a Luke Steele kind of situation, ironically. Uh, yeah. Is that when Muller were injured, Luke Steele came in. Liverpool and nobody knew how to bat him. He had a world, you know. I'm not saying I'm not comparing him. I'm not putting pressure on mm-hmm. lad, but uh, it keeps, you know, what what I've heard about from Luton Town fans have been me. They seventy percent of them wanting to keep at, at Luton, um, and before they should have had a chance. But all being well, he can have a chance with Barnsley. Uh, Barry Barry Thomas. I mean, he scored, didn't he? Uh, mm-hmm. in, in Oxford again, another player that Duff know about and. It just makes you wonder if we're going into summer, which we're all after, but Bristol got there before. Before is what what an impact he could have had. He don't look, look out of place. Russell for me again. Uh, I didn't see that coming from anywhere, but it's midfield is now starting to look like competition. I mean, we still look Thomas to come back. Unfortunately, Matty Wolf's out. But then when you look at midfield there, you've got uh, became Phillips. You know, Benson was out injured, but there's a competition there. And I get a good comparison what he did there, Dave. We, you know, Lyndon Dykes, we, Ollie Shaw, you, you never know what how they're going to adapt. I think one thing he did say is that the, the hardest thing will be to take on board is the amount of games, obviously, midweek weekend compared to the league he's been playing in. So for me, yeah, it started a bit slow and, you know, it's all, all going to get, which uh, H&L best as well, who's going to move well, I'll not forget him. Um didn't quite work out for him, uh, if I'm being honest. If it were there, not a problem. I, I ain't got a problem with that. But I think when he had it for his screen, he came back to Barnsley. And yeah, he put a shift in. At, at times, he run down and closed down. But again, end up product, it, it scores what we what we were lacking. So, I mean, for me, Andy, I don't think it was too bad a recruitment. Um, and we said, well, I've said all along that I think it's like Duff, probably another transfer window and he's more or less got a, a settled squad. So for you, players that you are keen on or interested in, uh, Andy, because I know you were saying that we need a few areas in, in, in previous videos that we need a, yeah. you know, a few areas. Uh, what out there took you by surprise? Um, that Russell, um, mm-hmm. yeah, like you've said, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Um, box to mo- box midfielder apparently, which, uh, you know, I'll, that, that'll suit me. That's what we need. Um, overall, I think a, a really good transfer window. Um, not just with players that we've fetched in, but with players that we've kept as well. Because I, I did expect key players leaving, um, mm-hmm. to be honest. Okay. Um, Anyone in particular? I was expecting Anderson going. Um, right. And also uh, Williams as well. Um, yeah, Williams so, and Preston, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Overall, I think we've done. Um, I think we've done all right. Um, yeah, Ollie Shaw is an unknown quantity, isn't he? Um, be interesting how he adapts, but you know that, that can go either way, can't it? You know, so mm-hmm. we'll just have to give him time. Um, I don't know what's happening with that uh, Waters because he's uh, he won't bench again money other night as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's about time we probably. Started him, I think, um, see, see what is, uh, you know, see what is capable of doing. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I, I was, I was more than happy with me, uh, honestly. Well, um, and yeah, that uh, that defender, uh, go on, what's he called now? Barry Thomas. Barry, Barry Thomas. Yeah, Barry Thomas. Um, brilliant signing that. Um, so, yeah, uh, we, it, squad's looking all right. And uh, I'm, like I say, I'm happy with it. Um, we, we have got um, a decent squad now to try and at least keep uh, in top six, um, I think. Um, and that won't be main concern. But while we're there, um, give Duff tools to 
uh, at least keep us there. Trying to keep us in top six, which brings us on to Portsmouth game tomorrow, uh, Dave. I mean, and our, and our place and long journey as well, Portsmouth. Um, how do you see it going? I mean, could you see many changes for Oxford game? Uh, obviously, you know, Collins is looking doubtful, so he's probably got one via, but would you would you tinker about with it much um, against Portsmouth, Dave? No, I'd keep, I'd keep the same team, you know, where you can. Like you say, Collins is a doubt, and I expect he'll be assessed on the day, mm. see where he's at. Um, but no, I'd, I, I always say if you've got a winning team, you keep a winning team unless you're forced into changes. Mm. And um, yeah, a couple of players didn't have the best games on, on Wednesday, but... Everyone has an off game now and again. You know they've they've worked well as a team. Um, you know I don't think no one had a shocker, did they on Wednesday? No, no one had a, had a poor game. No, no. And um, I, I just keep the, the squad together as, as as long as you can while while we're we're doing we're doing well while we're winning. You know, so um, I wouldn't make any changes myself now. And good options on bench as well, Dave. Well, there are now, yeah. And, um, you know, we've got um, so that, that Thomas reminds me of that lad we had from Burnley in, in defence. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a very similar player. Yeah. And, um, I think we got um, first half, though, it looks uh, especially with a lot uh, a lot more comfortable at the back. Not that mm. Oxford had that many chances, but when they did, I thought we looked pretty pretty steady. Second half, as I said before, was a little bit different. But um, I think um, you know they've only played together a couple of times, so um, you know it's going to be a little bit you know it missed to start off with. But if they can get a relationship going, that set of defenders now, then you know there's some good players in there. Um, and as, as you say, you've got depth on the bench, and if things aren't going well, and uh, you know I'm not sure how far Thomas is from playing first team football in League One, mm. but um, you know he's um, he's he's, come, he's had um, he had a knockabout on Tuesday, Wednesday, the end of twenty. Under twenty threes, and um, I didn't hear any negative come back from that from that game on there. Um, so I'm assuming he did all right. Um, not sure how long Benson's out for now, but we've got him to come back as well. But um, yeah, with the the new lads, obviously, we've got a, a few different options on the bench. Options on bench. I mean, Andy just going on from there. I'm more or less middle of what Dave said. My son, like. Uh... Many changes would you would you make any at all apart from obviously the you know the injury one what's like uh, with Collins? Yeah, that might be a forced change, which sounds me. Um, I don't. I think I'd be tempted to change Cole. Um, I think uh, from Wednesday and try one at new lads, but that's just me. That's probably what I'd do at computer on no, championship right, manager. Right. You know, <laughs> what do I know? Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think all it change. I, I would probably be tempted in in like I said, probably call. Um, and yeah, going back on Luke Thomas. Uh, yeah, I went to under twenty threes game um, earlier this week, and he played for staff, and he, he looked good. Um, did you look, look like comfortable, he, uh, Andy? Yeah, he did look like a Mister Beat, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they took him off at half time, uh, which is good, you know, not to. Well, that just a precaution, him. do you think, Ben? He didn't look in pain or out? Or... No, no, he didn't did look in pain. And um, it, it, it was a little bit... It got a bit heated as well, game, um, as well. But it always seems to be under 23s. But now it looked well. Um, it looked good. Um, and like I said, going on that under 23s as well, so did that defend from Chelmsford as well, because he played. He looked all right. Hmm. Um, not special, but he looked, he looked all right. Um but yeah, and I've had a few trialists in that game, didn't they? As well, yeah, um, that, yeah. Um, I think nearly half a team are trialists. Um, mm. I didn't did he play, play as, again as well? That Wellens, no, he's, no, he didn't play, right? no, he was not even in squad, right? Um, no, but yeah, again, going back to keeper situation, though, um, that Paul Cooper played for under 23s, um, he looks a good keeper. Mm. Uh, so we're, we're not short of keepers now, um, but and plus we've got that sale as well. But uh, it's probably that pecking order. But but yeah, going back to your question um, on Saturday uh, tomorrow, I'd probably just be tempted just to um, change it with Cole, um, Cole and uh, no, sorry, Norwood, and probably yeah, I'd probably give that what is a, a start. Surely he's yeah. not just come to sit top bench. 
So Andy's doing football manager and he's going to change <laughs> change it, Dave. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Mm. If, uh, it's going to be Duff's side or it's going to be uh, Andy, football manager, 2023 side. So we'll see what goes from there. Uh, Dave, uh, school prediction, mate. Uh, who do you think school prediction and who do you think is going to be influential player for us? Uh, well, we're not going to win because Jonah Jinx is going down for it. <laughs> so I'm going to apologise to everyone fans who late in advance. Yeah, I'm going again, so we're not going to win. But um, I, I quite happily take a draw tomorrow. I mm. very, very happily take a draw. Yeah. Um, 2 is my score prediction. Uh, I think Phillips is due a goal. And um, just to upset Andy, I'm going to say Cole's going to get one tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I think... Um, I think I'm going to go for, for Connell as me as my main man yeah. tomorrow. I mean, I didn't see the Accrington game, um, but I saw the what he did against Oxford, and he was absolutely superb. You know, mm. uh, that he looked so deadly down that left hand side, and um, he, he's pulling all the strings down there. So I think um, you know, unless um, Russell gets a gets a shout in um, in midfield, mm. and uh, he gets a chance to show what he can do in the middle, then I think um, you know you're going to have Connell. Influencing the game over there, and to a certain extent, Phillips on the on the right hand side, he does a, a similar kind of thing. Um, you know, he gets the ball well down there, and he he saw what he did um, for the first goal on on Wednesday. What he can do yeah. um, while he's not quite as a, much of a flair player as as Connell is, um, he does the he does the job. He's, he's very good at doing what he does and um, setting up chances. And show like the Thomas goal on. On Wednesday, so um, yeah, between those two, I think if this, the team stays the same as what he did for Wednesday, but uh, I think Connell's going to be going to be the standout man for me. I hope, I hope, yeah, I hope. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I kind of get that because I think Phillips he does a lot at work, and I think he gets like underrated uh, mm-hmm. as, as a player kind of thing. But he does do pretty soon about a bit. So uh, Andy, Dave's going for call uh, to score one at goals. I know. You're gonna love this word I'm gonna say in a minute, but it might take a time for new new people, you know, new players to gel in and to gel into the side. Uh, but no, uh your score prediction, mate, and uh who do you think will be influential for you? Um I'm gonna go for another two one winter vets, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um key player. Yeah, I think it's going to be probably a battle in midfield, I think, tomorrow. So, I want to see performance from Kane, to be honest. So, I, I think Kane, my key yeah. man tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, Kane. Um, right, I'm going... I think it's going to be a draw, my son. I think it's going to be a close game. Portsmouth, it's always an hard place to go and it's a long journey. Uh, I'm going to go 1-1. I think it'd be a set piece that we'll we'll take it from, which I'm you know I won't complain about. And and to be fair, if you come away f- uh, from Portsmouth with a draw, I don't think it'd be a bad result. Um, mm. You know that journey. For me, I'm I was going to say midfield, but when I've been thinking about it away, I'm going to say Anderson at back. Um, I think he needs to keep defensive because if Ishta does start, you know, new keeper, I think it's paramount that he's got. A, Kind of communication via uh, togetherness and understanding via, and I think that should come from captain. Uh, so I, I think if it would have been Colin, uh, sorry, if Collins had uh, been playing, then I'd probably gone with Luke O'Connell midfield. I think he'll pull strings and that. But I'm just thinking if you know, instead that you new know, keeper starts, is looking for some kind of continuity in front of him, and if your back three is not on the same par. It's going to have a detriment effect to goalkeeper. That's my that was my thought because I know that Dave mentioned it earlier. You know, it could come in, you know, and it's like a bit nervy. You know, new team, understanding with the players in front of you. So I'm going to go Anderson as my key player, uh, one one. Uh, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping we come away with all three points. Like, but um, again, it's not a bad position to be in, and options on bench and all that. Like we said earlier. Um, and that's from what we need. Uh, I think in every department, to be fair, competition and you know, don't rest on your laurels. I mean, just thinking if you if if you start if you do change it and you have Waters and Norwood, 
You've still got all the Shaw on bench. You've got Cole on bench. You're not even got on about midfield yet. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's options there. So, yeah, good, good points. Good points. Um, so thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Leave your comments below. What do you change, Joe? What do you think of your transfers? What do you think your squad prediction is going to be? Andy and Dave, appreciate it. Thanks for joining. Um, I know it's been a busy week and everything like that, so it's always great to have your thoughts and tech on things all boundary related. Uh, catch up on matches and uh, transfers. Uh, let's see if we can come away with three points or let's see if we can still, you know, fight on because coming up we've got his uh, next game is, is at home against Cambridge, so be a nice win to win on that. So, yeah, Andy and Dave, appreciate you for joining me. Uh, everybody who was watching, you reds.